There we go. Okay. So my name is Veronica Brill. I'm a registered nurse. I have a BSN. I'm the founder of Blenderized RN. Um, email me with any um, details or further questions at veronica at blenderizedrn.com. Text all questions um, to 415-496-9245. And what I'm going to do is um, after each slide, I will check the um, questions and we can go over them. And then after, we'll have a question period. So um, this is just a quick overview of what we're going to cover um, for diets for seizure control. Uh, we'll go over a quick um, history of diets and seizure control, um, the low glycemic index treatment, modified Atkins diet, uh, medium chain triglyceride diet, a ketogenic diet, um, and it quickly uh, the modified chain uh, medium chain triglyceride diet is um, a ketogenic diet. Um, so we'll, I'm just going to briefly go over that one. Glycemic index is in red because it's one of the most important factors um, with seizure control. So we will definitely go over that. And then anytime you're talking about glycemic index, it's important to briefly mention glycemic load. Although glycemic load pertains a lot to um, diets for weight loss, but when we're talking about seizure control, we want to stick with um, a glycemic index. Um, we'll talk about some supplements, um, why diets are not working optimally. Now, um, this will pertain to not only um, working with my own son and controlling his seizures, but also some of my clients. Um, we'll go over my recommendations and the case of D, and D is my son. So, the history of diets and seizure control. So, fasting has been, true, has been used to treat epilepsy since 500 BC. Um, people would um, make their children with epilepsy or people with epilepsy fast, and then they started noticing that they were um, stopping the seizures. So, to mimic the metabolism of fasting, um, the ketogenic diet was introduced by modern physicians as a treatment for epilepsy, and this happened in the 1920s. Um, so it was really popular for a couple of decades, but then with um, new anti-epileptic drug treatments, its use declined, and in the past 15 years, it's um, had an explosion in use, and um, it's actually been one of the most effective treatments for childhood epilepsy. Um, because the ketogenic diet is actually very difficult to tolerate, um, the modified Atkins diet was developed in the early 2000s, um, and it is a lot less restrictive, and we'll go over that. And then the low glycemic index diet was developed in 2002. And um, medium chain triglyceride diet is a form of the ketogenic, ketogenic diet mainly used in Canada and the United Kingdom. Um, I'll just go over it briefly, but it is um, not a diet that I've um, put together for anybody. And um, it is, um, it relies on a lot of um, fats that are not naturally found that are um, processed. And so for that reason, I don't like to use it. So glycemic index. The most important part of a diet that has a goal of seizure control is glycemic index. I cannot stress this enough. So what is the glycemic index? It's an indicator of the degree of the increase in blood glucose levels by a specific food compared to that of a standard food. So what is that standard? The standard is glucose. Glucose has a glycemic index of 100. Sucrose, ordinary sugar, has a GI of 65. So <clears throat> what is, how do we measure foods? So most healthcare organizations use a high, medium, and low rating system for glycemic. Using this system, foods get classified in the following ways. So a low GI 
uh, would be considered zero to 55 using um, this standard. Medium is 56 to 69, um, and a high GI is 70 or greater. However, it has been uh, my experience that children that have um, difficulties with seizures and are very sensitive tend to even react to um, glycemic indexes above 20. So I've actually made um, my own glycemic index values. Um, ultra low would be zero to 20. A low glycemic index would be 21 to 50. Um, medium is 21 to 69. And a high glycemic index is 70 or greater. So what does this mean? Let's take, for instance, our blood sugar and um, measure it over time. Let's say I eat some cake for my birthday. My blood sugar is going to spike up because this is a high glycemic index food, and then it's going to drop quickly. And if you were to be on a ketogenic diet and relying on ketones as your source of energy, all of a sudden, all of this um, high impact carbohydrates or high glycemic index um, would then make your body resort to using that glucose as a form of energy and the ketones would drop and then you'd have to start over again with the ketogenic diet. So if let's say I have a spinach salad with some bacon and a hard-boiled egg with some olive oil dressing this would be how my blood sugar would be um, after that type of a meal. So it would be low and it would maintain itself for a longer period of time. So this, is, this would be a low GI reaction in um, blood sugar. And so if you've got ketones in your bloodstream, this would still make um, your brain take in the ketones as energy and it wouldn't disrupt ketosis. Okay, so foods and their GI. So ultra low GI foods, um, zero to 20 GI, um, would be spinach, kale, carrots, broccoli. Um, there's quite a few to choose from. And so why I think one of the reasons um, children, especially with blended diets, are sensitive to higher GI foods is when you alter the food, you alter the glycemic index, you almost increase it. So blending it, um, there aren't, aren't any studies that I could find, but there are um, lots of websites pertaining to GI talking about blend, um, modifying foods like, um, you know, if you were to, um, if you were to uh, compare applesauce to an apple, if you turned an apple into applesauce, it would have a higher GI because you've broken down <clears throat> the apple. So um, blending it may make them more sensitive to uh, the GI within the food. So if you stick with an ultra low GI, um, they don't uh, react as as heavily as if they would to another uh, to a higher GI food. So low GI foods, 21 to 50, you see peas, whole wheat bread, cherries, coconut, peaches. The whole wheat bread, you know, it, it depends on where you find your sources, um, can go higher. And also there's different types of whole wheat bread that you can buy. So <clears throat> these, um, this, my source has is Harvard Medical School. And I actually, in my references at the end, have a link to this. Um, to the GI levels and all the foods. Sorry, I was just checking. We still don't have any questions. Okay. So medium GI foods, 51 to 69. This is where you start to have um, more grains, uh, more processed grains, processed foods, um, even bananas. Um, potato chips, surprisingly, are still only 51, and that's probably because of the fat they have in them. Um, and you've got honey there, corn tortillas. And then the high GI foods are, you know, a baguette, a Kaiser roll, white bread, Gatorade, cornflakes, instant cream of wheat, you know, um, watermelon is up there, uh, fruit roll-ups, boiled potato, and a sweet potato. 
So while we're on GI, we'll talk about glycemic load. Glycemic load, or GL, combines both the quality and the quantity of the carbohydrate in one number, and it can predict um, blood glucose values of the different types and amounts of food. So the formula is glycemic index times the amount of carbohydrate divided by a carbohydrate divided by 100. So we'll take a single apple as an example. It's it has a GI of 40 and it contains 15 grams of carbohydrate. Um, so the glycemic load would be 40 times 15 divided by 100, and it's got a six, it's got six grams of glycemic load. If you take a baked potato that has double the glycemic index but the same amount of carbohydrates, it'll have double the glycemic load. So basically, we can predict that the potato will have twice the metabolic effect of an apple. So you can think of it as um, the amount of carbohydrate on a food carbohydrate in a food adjusted for its glycemic potency. So the diets, here's, here's where, um, this is the important part. This is, this is what we all need to know. So we're gonna start off diets at, from the most tolerable to the least tolerable. So the most tolerable diet is the low glycemic index diet. So as you can see, low glycemic index diet, it's got about 60 to 65% fat, 20 to 30 percent protein and carbs are about 10 to 15 percent okay so low glycemic index treatment it monitors not only the total amount of carbohydrates consumed daily but it focuses on carbohydrates that have a low gi so in reference to this a low gi would be below 55. Um, so the LGIT allows for an increased intake of carbohydrates versus the ketogenic diet, and actually quite a bit more. And food quantities are not weighed out to the gram, but are based on portion sizes. So how does it work? The focus has changed from a diet that produces ketones efficiently, like the ketogenic diet, to one that weighs a greater importance on having a stable blood glucose level. So, um, there still are ketones in the blood with this diet, but um, it's they're not as much, and I'll, I'll talk about that. So it's a more tolerable diet and can be followed with a high compliance rate versus the ketogenic diet. So there was a study done on 11 patients. Um, it reduced the seizures for the majority of patients. Um, eight of the 11 had a greater than 50% reduction in seizure frequency. Four became completely seizure-free and two were able to reduce anticonvulsant medications. Um, so the level of ketones were noticeably lower versus a classic ketogenic diet, but they were still higher than um, a laboratory reference levels of normal. So uh, blood glucose levels were also lower than normal. Uh, so a normal fasting blood sugar level is between 70 and 99 and a normal blood sugar level two hours after eating is less than 140. So that's your baseline. On the low glycemic index treatment, patients with a greater than 90% seizure reduction averaged a 72.6 level for their uh, blood glucose. So their blood glucose, not fasting after eating, was at the low end of a typical fasting blood glucose. So a sample um, low, glycemic index, index, low glycemic index treatment meal for a toddler would be um, a hard-boiled egg, a quarter of an avocado, a handful of walnuts, a tablespoon of coconut oil, and one serving of 1% milk or plain yogurt, and that's um, 100 milliliters. Um, and my personal suggestion is you can add a serving of ultra-low GI foods, like a handful of spinach and kale mix. So let me just check to see if we have any questions so far. Okay. So modified Atkins diet. Um, again, this was created because um, of the ketogenic diet being very difficult to tolerate. So 
As you can see, um, with the modified Atkins, the fat is 60 to 70 percent, protein is 20 to 30 percent, and carbs are 4 to 6 percent. So um, again, it's a change to the traditional ketogenic diet. Um, it makes it a lot less restrictive. There are no fluid or calorie restrictions or limitations. Um, although fats are strongly encouraged, they're not weighed and measured. Again, it's a much easier diet to put together. One of the biggest differences is that there are no restrictions on proteins. Foods are not weighed and measured, but carbohydrate counts are monitored by patients or parents. And it can be started outside of the hospital, and you don't need to be fasting before starting the diet. So it seems to help a sim similar amount of patients as the ketogenic diet. Um, 40, 40 to 50% um, saw a greater than 50% seizure reduction, including 15% um, were actually seizure free. So a sample meal for a toddler would be a spinach salad with bacon bits and a hard boiled egg, extra virgin olive oil and balsamic vinegar dressing, a quarter of an avocado. Okay. Um, for um, blenders, for blending moms, I would say, or blending parents, I would say um, you'd mix that with um, some water. So the ketogenic diet. Let me see before we jump on ketogenic diet. Let's see if there's any questions about the MAD diet. No? Okay. So the ketogenic diet is 80 to 90 percent fat, protein is six to eight percent, and carbs are two to four percent. So a ketogenic diet basically mimics starvation, and um, it allows the body to go into a metabolic state called ketosis. So normally our bodies are sugar-driven machines. We rely on sugar. Um, so when we're deprived of any dietary carbohydrates, the liver becomes the sole provider of glucose to feed your organs, especially the brain. Um, so the, the backup is ketone bodies that the liver derives. And these ketone bodies come from fatty acids in your diet or your body fat, which you know, when, when people go on a ketogenic diet to lose weight, their body starts burning their own fat for energy, and that's how they lose weight. These ketones are released into the bloodstream, and they're taken up by the brain and other organs as a form of energy. So during metabolic stress, which is starvation, ketones serve as an alternative energy source, and it maintains normal brain function and cell metabolism. Actually, um, BHB, a major ketone, may be even more efficient than glucose as a fuel. And a ketogenic diet also increases the number of mitochondria in the brain. And the mitochondria is um, where all the energy is created. And ketosis occurs when the ratio of fatty acids to glucose is 2 to 1 or greater. Now, depending on the type of literature you're reading, there are... Um, some doctors that say that you can reach ketosis at a one-to-one -one level if you've got enough medium chain triglycerides, which is why the medium chain triglyceride diet um, works. So that two-to-one is on a classic keto ketogenic diet. So the ketogenic diet, some of the reasons why um, it can be difficult is that food must be weighed and preciseness is necessary. Um, your fluid intake is restricted to 80% of daily intake. Um, so 75 to 100 calories for every kilogram of body weight, and then one to two grams of protein for every kilogram of body weight. And that's a pediatric amount. So typically the diet is started in the hospital. The child usually begins by fasting, except for water, and it's under close medical supervision for 24 hours. Um, some doctors are okay now without starting it in the, in the hospital because there's evidence that shows that fasting is probably not necessary for long-term efficiency, but it can lead to a quicker onset of ketosis. 
So I'm just going to check my text messages to see if there are any questions. Okay. Um, one big concern uh, about the ketogenic diet is that your child, I, I shouldn't say may, will become constipated and you should have a bowel routine in place from your child's doctor. So here's a very simple overview how um, your glucose levels fall and lipase releases stored um, triglycerides um, and fatty acids travel to the liver and the liver produces ketones for energy. And here is um, a ketone urine test and, and uh, this is where you want on a ketogenic diet, you want your ketones to be at um, at 160. So the statistics on ketogenic diets, half of the children started on the traditional ketogenic diet will have at least a 50% reduction in seizures within six months. Half of these will have a, a greater than 90% improvement, including 15% would be will be seizure free. Many families are able to successfully reduce or eliminate anticonvulsant drugs. And cognition is often improved as well. So here is a sample um, daily three to one ketogenic blend for a toddler. And um, of course I don't use any uh, ketogenic formula. Um, you would use chicken breast, egg yolk, coconut oil, avocado, some olive oil, some carrot, coconut cream, spinach, kale or lettuce, uh, coconut flakes, and macadamia nuts. Okay, so the MCT diet, medium chain triglyceride diet, it was developed in an attempt to make the classic ketogenic diet more palatable. And that seems to be a growing theme among all of these diets. And it's more flexible, the larger variety of foods, and um, you can have higher carbohydrates and uh, protein allowance. Um, so the MCT refers to the type of oil, medium chain triglyceride, which produces ketones more easily than the long chain triglyceride. And um, so adding medium chain triglycerides to your diet can increase the number of carbs you can eat while staying in ketosis. So the medium chain triglyceride diet has 30% of the calories obtained from um, MCT oil or an emulsion oil and 30% from long chain dietary fats. So you would have to buy this emulsion oil, which is 100% um, um, medium chain triglyceride. So here's an overview comparison of the diet. So you look at the very bottom is where your regular diet is. And then you can see, <coughs> excuse me, the progression of the diets and how the fat is slowly increasing and the carbs are decreasing. And the protein um, does start to decrease as you get into the ketogenic diets. And so the progression should never go from a regular diet to a ketogenic four to one. The progression always should go from a regular um, to a low glycemic index treatment to a MAD, um, then ketogenic diet three to one, then ketogenic four to one. Um, the MAD diet, it's important to note that the proteins, although they're listed at, at that recommendation um, in this chart, there is no restriction on protein, so that can be a much larger amount. But ideally, this is the area right above the regular diet. I believe most, most children can maintain proper seizure control, um, if not just above in the MAD. I don't think you need to go to a full ketogenic diet. And why... Um, I'm going to go over why that may not be the case and why children are going too high in the ketogenic diets as far as a 4 to 1 and a 5 to 1. First, we'll talk about supplements. So taurin is a very important supplement. It's an amino acid 
that supports neurological development and helps regulate the level of water and minerals in the blood. Torn is also thought to have antioxidant properties. So um, my son is on Torin. I'm just checking to see if I've got a question. Okay. Um, there are actually a lot of studies out there showing that Torin can reduce seizures and is also capable of treating seizure-associated brain damage. Now, these studies are fairly new. There's no long-term studies um, showing anything about Torin, and I haven't seen anything negative about Torin. And the recommended amount that I could find in most studies is 16 to 150 milligrams per kilogram a day. Uh, my son's neurologist tends to favor the higher amount. Um, I think he, yeah, he's he's probably at the 150 range. And so a few other considerations. Uh, folic acid uh, may drop during seizures and may be low in some people with seizures. Um, but it can also make some anticonvulsant drugs less effective. So it could actually raise your risk for more seizures if the balance isn't correct. So don't take folic acid without your doctor's supervision. Vitamin B12, um, some anticonvulsant drugs may cause low levels of B12 in the body. So just be aware of that. And vitamin E may help to reduce the frequency of seizures when used with prescription drugs. And again, some studies show that it doesn't help. So don't take vitamin E. Um, unless you've talked to your doctor about it first. Okay, why the diets aren't working optimally? It's, um, it's been my um, experience with my son and the clients that I have um, that I've noticed small things that um, can be changed to make these diets more effective. So. Acute carbohydrates or high GI items, uh, intake of these items can rapidly terminate the, protect the protective effect of the ketogenic diet. As we saw earlier in the graph, when you get a spike of blood sugar, it reduces uh, the ketones and then your body is then going to the sugar as a form of energy. Um, Dr. Atkins pointed out in his writing that you can't go halfway on a low-carb diet. Every time you break the diet with high-impact starches or sugars, you take the body out of dietary ketosis. So, high GI and medium GI sweeteners and foods that are included in the diet reduce the effects of the diet. So, many times I will see... Um, I will have clients that tried the keto cal formula for an, tried it for months, tried it again for another six months, went up from a three to one to a four to one, went up to a five to one. Uh, things aren't working. Well, I um, personally do not recommend keto cal formula as um, a ketogenic option. So, the keto cal formula three to one in 100 grams has 7.2 grams of carbs. The carbs in keto cal are derived from corn syrup and lactose. Corn syrup has a glycemic index of 73, and um, but this can vary. I've seen it higher. I've seen it 85, almost 90, depending on the exact fructose to glucose concentration in the product. And lactose GI is 45. And so this is the ingredients from the website. There's lactose and, and the corn syrup solids. So corn syrup and lactose by itself, lactose on its own and corn syrup at all are contraindicated in a ketogenic diet or any diet that has any um, goal of seizure control. So vitamin supplements and medications contain high um, GI items. Something like Centrum contains cornstarch, um, and cornstarch has a GI of 85. And uh, many people will say, well, it's just a small amount, it's a tiny amount, but we, there are no studies showing how sensitive these children are to even the smallest amount of high GI foods. For instance, I was told by the first dietitian I saw before I started doing all of my research, 
I was told to give my son a half Centrum vitamin each day with his ketogenic diet. And every time I gave him the Centrum shortly after he had a seizure. As soon as I stopped the Centrum and I stopped all the high GI items, the, the diet started working better. Flintstone vitamins, which I've seen um, prescribed with some ketogenic diets, um, contain dextrose, sugar, corn syrup, solids, and artificial flavoring. Although artificial flavoring are not high GI items, um, you should try to not have any artificial flavoring um, or processed foods or any high GI items in the diet. So what are my recommendations to optimize these diets um, to make them work? Or if you're just starting out, where do you start? So initially, if you're looking, um, if you're looking for a seizure control diet along with help either from your dietitian or if you'd like to join my Blenderized RN group on Facebook, I can help you out with this as a, you can become a client of mine. But along with your dietitian, you should focus on moderate ketone levels combined with low stabilized blood sugar, no spikes, okay? So start out with a regular diet and just change the glycemic index of foods to be below 50. So um, at the end of this, um, at the end of this presentation, I have my references there. I can email you my references and the Harvard Medical School um, list of foods and their glycemic indexes. You can uh, go through that and pick foods that are all below 50 and include those in the diet. And it really doesn't restrict the diet that much. Um, change all medications to compounded, carb-free, free of any sweeteners and dyes. So um, something like valproic acid, usually if you just get it at your local pharmacy, it's going to have sugars included, it's going to have dyes in it, all of these things they put in um, because they're assuming the child is taking it by mouth. And I'm just gonna quickly check this here. Okay. So remove all high glycemic items from the diet. Some toothpaste even contains sugar, kids' toothpaste. So anything high glycemic needs to be up. No more potatoes in the diet, no more um, processed food, no more um, anything that will have a GI above 50. So if this doesn't work, what's your next step? I recommend then you speak to your dietitian or nutritionalist about a low glycemic index treatment because it is the least restrictive diet that you can put your child on. If the low glycemic index treatment does not work, you want to try a low glycemic index treatment with ultra low GI uh, carbs. So ultra low again is 20 and below. If that doesn't work, you'd, you want to move to a modified Atkins diet with low GI carbs. And then if that doesn't work, a ketogenic diet, three to one with low, to, low GI carbs. Um, and then if that doesn't work, which would really surprise me, a ketogenic diet, um, four to one with low GI carbs. So the case of D. This is my son D. Um, D is over two and a half years old, and I was told that he wouldn't even make it this long. So, D has severe cobblestone lysencephaly. He is below the first percentile um, for um, cognitive development. Um, he had constant seizures from birth that were mainly, they were noticeable, but if you um, if you weren't aware, we were not aware of his uh, brain malformation. So we were told that you know it's normal. It's um, we were told the small twitches and eyes moving side to side were normal. But then um, it became unmanageable by seven months. We had an MRI and then we found out the diagnosis. So 
He had infantile spasm seizures and he had tonic clonic seizures. His infantile spasms were almost all day. At, it, at his worst, I think he got a few breaks during the day without seizures, but he was, um, it was almost constant. He actually, um, at a point, was not sleeping for more than an hour at a time. And then he'd wake up and have 15 minutes of seizures. And um, it, was, it was a pretty horrendous time. We went to Stanford Medical Center. We were turned away by their, by their neuro team. They stated that seizures are a normal part of lysencephaly and that his long-term prognosis was poor. Um, we were then sent to a specialized ketogenic diet dietitian. Um, she put us on a three to one ketogenic diet that wasn't working. And he actually was not tolerating it. And that's when I decided I needed to um, do research and um, do this on my own. So he's been tonic clonic seizure free for 18 months. I think it's been actually 19 months. Um, infantile spasm seizure free for over eight months. His cognitive abilities have improved compared to himself. He is still below the first percentile for cognitive abilities for his age, but compared to himself, he has um, grown by leaps and bounds cognitively. So what's Dee's diet? Um, bone broth as a base that I make on my own in uh, the Blenderize RN group. We're all making bone broth. All carbs are ultra low glycemic index. Uh, he has a high protein. Um, he has high protein in his diet. I wouldn't say it's excessive. Um, it's probably about 1.5 times the recommended amount for his age and weight. And his keto ratio ranges between 1.5 to 1 and 2.5 to 1. He also takes Torin 2,000 milligrams daily. And he is dairy free. He takes calcium and vitamin D loose powder supplement. It's Kirkman. He takes a Kirkman calcium vitamin D loose powder supplement. There is absolutely nothing in that supplement besides calcium and vitamin D. He takes a multivitamin loose powder, again from Kirkman, and um, there is nothing added to that loose powder except for the vitamins that are listed. And a sample of Dee's diet. For lunch, he'll have a small chicken drumstick from the bone broth, half small carrot from the bone broth, a quarter of avocado, and then 60 mils of my super green low GI blend. So what is my super green G low GI blend? Um, it is kale, spinach, and wheatgrass. And I put it in the blender with some uh, filtered water. And I will run that until it's nice and green. And here's another uh, picture of you know, the diet that I put in there. There's blueberries, avocado, spinach, and tomato um, mixed with chicken and blended. And then here's another uh, sample. There's salmon and avocado. Um, so this is a salmon and salad, I would call it. And kale, spinach, and wheatgrass there, and he'll get um, 60 mils of that. So with D, my son D, this is just one example of a diet that has been balanced that works for D. Um, it may take time to find a good balance for your child, and not every child will experience the same results. Um, I don't think D's diet uh, falls into one particular category, and I don't think that your, your child should either. There might, um, the, the balance needs to be um, adjusted, and you need to work with a, a good dietitian or work with me to help balance your child's diet so that they're receiving optimal results. Um, and diet options are really one of the least invasive things that you can try to reduce your child's seizures. So here are references. If you have any questions regarding anything I just said, you can text me now at 415-496-9245, or you can email me um, at veronica 
veronica at blenderizedrn.com. And if you'd like to talk more extensively about anything, um, you can definitely email me and I can go over any questions you may have. If there's something that I can't answer, um, I can get back to you with that information. So I will be answering questions um, for the next, uh, let's say, 15 minutes if you have any. If not, then I will log off from the webinar. And I appreciate all of you um, for logging on today. Hello. And um, if you have any further questions, again, email me, veronica at blenderizedrn.com. I'm going to see if we have any questions. No, we don't. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope it was informative. Um, if you need some help making decisions regarding your child's um, blended diet or um, seizure control diet, please email me and I can give you, I can email you this um, presentation and you can take it to your dietitian. Okay. Have a great day, everyone. It was a pleasure and I hope that you found this helpful and informative.